Yeah, I wonder. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Ready to be here. I'm here to teach you how to dogfight. This video, I'm going to explain what dogfighting is, how to do it, how I like to do it, and the three different kinds of it. So first of all, I'm just going to say a lot of these are my opinion. Whenever you dogfight, or like anything, you have your way of doing it. I'm going to show you and say my way of how I do it. I have a good amount of time in War Thunder, so I think I have some edges, some skills and some traits that would help a lot of people. Because a lot of people, they'll say, you gotta climb, you gotta do this and that. Well, I don't like doing that. So this is how I like to dogfight. And this, this might not help you, you might see this all as just not a good way to dogfight. Well, that's your way. This is my way. And if you can just take anything out of my way that can help you out, then it's been a successful video. So anyway, let's get to it. Like and subscribe. Comment down below what I've missed, or what you'd like me to do next. And yes, we are getting to it. There are three different kinds of dogfighting. You have offensive dogfighting, defensive dogfighting, and neutral dog fighting. I'm not sure what you'd call it. Or just just plain dog fighting. Offensive dog fighting is when you're on the offensive. You're the one 2000 feet above the enemy and you're diving on them. You're the one behind them shooting. You're the one trying to kill the other. Defensive dog fighting is when you're the one trying to be killed and you're trying to fly for your life. And neutral dog fighting, let's call it that is a mix of the both. You're, let's just say you're in a kerfuffle, 5v5, all in a kerfuffle, trying to kill each other. You're doing a bit of both. You're trying to kill a person, but you're trying not to be killed. How I see it is there's a 100% system. 25% of dogfighting is defensive, purely defensive. 25% is purely offensive. And then 50% of it is mixed, neutral dogfighting. Some go to some go to other. Like I, there are some times where I'm purely just trying to live, and then there's other times I'm purely trying to kill, and then there's a mix in the middle. We're going to go into the different ways of how to win your dogfights. But first of all, I think a very important thing to get out of the way is in order to be good at dogfighting, you have to know the plan you are using. This is the P51D. I know. It's a good plane. It has good speed, an okay turn rate, pretty good turn rate, and a good rate of climb. Now what a lot of people will tell you how to use this aircraft is to climb to an ungodly altitude and then boom and zoom. That's a way you can use it, but that's not how I use it. I use this aircraft, well how I like doing things in general is I'll climb to about 4,000 feet, 3,000 feet. And I'll kind of mum around there. Because what I find whenever I'm trying to climb, no matter how high I climb, there's always someone who's climbed higher than me. No matter how high you go, you can go to the stratosphere. There's always that one person that's higher than you. And the one match you're higher than everyone, everyone's down on the deck dogfighting. And you're way too high to even think of diving down on them. So I just think climbing to that high altitude, climbing for superiority just doesn't work for me. I think it's kind of dumb. It doesn't work for me. It takes too long. I have a life. Not much of one, but not one to be spent 20 minutes climbing. I like sticking around 3,000 feet because I got some work room. Because everyone who climbs to 10,000 feet isn't going to dive down. Because everyone, your whole rest of your team has climbed. So they're not going to want to dive down on someone that's not nearly on the deck. So a lot of people just don't pay you any mind. But it gives you the air advantage. You still have an, enough working room to be able to dive down a little bit. And you're also able to get to the battlefield quicker than a lot of people and able to intercept with low-flying bombers or attackers. So you, you still have some work room. But that's what I just want to get that out of the way. Back to my air, back to the plane. You gotta know your plane. So you know this plane can has good speed, has good turn time. I know, for me playing this, I've spaded, so I have a good 
pretty pretty good knowledge of it. It can hold a lot going upwards, meaning it can it can climb very well for a short amount of time. And I'm able to you can speed trap people with it, like if someone goes up, you can. Anyway, I'm not I don't know where I'm going with this, but know your aircraft. I know this plane can turn well and has a good speed. It's a very good all-around fighter. It's not the best at turning. It might not be the fastest at this VR, but it's pretty good. Now let's look at this. The P-51, I would say, is a good base. It's a good middle point on the spectrum of... Or the... For, like, ground. There's the armor triangle. The mobility, the armor, and the firepower. This is very towards the center of the triangle. Like, many... Other, like many planes, this one's in the middle. Like, like a, many American planes, this one's in the middle. But then you look at the Japanese Zero. And it can turn extremely well. And it can go a pretty good speed. But it has an alright offensive armament and no armor. I would play this thing differently than I play the P-51. The P-51, where I'll just run around and do some... I'll normally be more offensive. I'll try... I'll try to... Use it more versatile. I'll just... Because in the P-51, I know I can take some hits. Depending on the aircraft. Like, if I look back and I see... A, a British plane or a German plane, you kind of got to be concerned. But every plane should be concerned when it's behind you. But some planes will do more to you than others. In a Japanese plane, you can take no hits. You are guaranteed. You are, if you survive a shot, you're you're a lucky bastard. You're lucky. You cannot take a hit in these planes. So it's your priority to not put yourself in a position where you can be shot at. But this plane gives you the reassurance to know that you are going to be able to outturn virtually anyone at this VR, other than maybe a Spitfire. You can outturn anything. But it doesn't mean you can outrun anything. So you gotta kinda pull them into dogfights. If they try to extend or energy trap you, you're screwed. But you gotta put them in dogfights. So by knowing that my plane can turn, right, I know its strengths. Its turn, of, its maneuverability, it has alright speed and alright gunnage. So I know how I should use it. I should try to put myself in good offensive dogfighting positions. Like if I see a teammate in danger, I can rush in and help. And get on the enemy six before they can acknowledge my existence. Then I'll try not to put myself in any risky situation that could jeopardize the integrity of my aircraft. Because if any bit of integrity jeopardization will lead to your utter destruction. So, yeah, a big thing is knowing your aircraft, but also knowing your enemy's aircraft. Like, if I'm... Let's go back to the P-51. If I'm flying my P-51, and I look over, and I just see a... Not a MiG, but a DO-335. I know I can outturn it. Can I outrun it? On a good... On good circumstance, I can outrun it. I can outturn it, but it's guns. Oh boy, it's guns. You do not want one of these behind you. Because it'll shred you. So I know if I look and I see a DO-335, I'm like, alright. I can outturn that. I can get an edge on that. But I don't want to head on it. Because it'll shred me. So I know that. I know that it's a pretty equal dogfight. I have a good chance of winning. But if I see a zero... I know as an American plane that if I don't win in the first 10 seconds, if I don't land my first shot, I'm screwed. There's no way I can outdog fight that. So I am either going to throw a couple at it, maybe try a little bit, see what I can do, and then haul crap out of there. Because I am not going to be able to dogfight that and hope to win. It's a losing battle either way. But for a lot of planes, like Spitfires, you look at Spitfires, and they'll outturn you any time of the day. So as a zero, I look out for Spitfires. It's just, there's there's many things that'll try and kill you. 
not a boat, but if if you're dogfighting a boat, then you're doing something weird. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so we've talked. Sorry, we've talked about your aircraft, the enemy's aircraft, and the three different types of dogfighting, and what they mean. How would you offensively dogfight? How do you do that? Well. In order to offensively dogfight, you want to try and have an altitude advantage. That's a good thing. Altitude is good to have. But it's not something you want to bank too much on. Because if you can be up at 10,000 feet, but you're going stalling speed, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable. That's why I like, personally, staying down low at a good altitude where I can have good speed. I don't want to go too high because I lose too much speed and it takes too long. But if I look down and I see a BF-109 just piddle paddling around at 2,000 feet and I'm at 4,000 feet, then I know I got a good, I'm, I'm good, I got cash money. I got a good example of offensive dogfighting. I'm going to show it right now. Oh, those are not AI. Oh, God. Um, well, oh, Wellington. That's kind of my niche. That's somewhat of my niche, actually. I'm gonna go for the fighter. The fighter is actually gonna do something to me at the side so. Snakey snake. Sneaky snake! Alright. As you can see, I dived down and I turned my engine off. I cut it so I wouldn't gain too much speed. Because if the Italian noticed I was behind him, he could have easily outpulled me. Because I was going breakneck speed towards him. If he had noticed, he could have pulled away and I would have overshot. But by turning my engine off, I lowered my noise, which I also had the advantage of the Wellington. The Wellington masked my sound, and I got up right nice and close to him and shredded him. That's a good offensive dogfighting. That right there is a good example. And then I went for the Wellington and shredded him. You are completely in advantage. And it should be a sure win situation for you. You have like a 90% chance. That's offensive. Offensive dogfighting is you should have a 75 to a 90% chance of victory. Almost guaranteed. But you can mess it up, too. There, I have had many a time where I failed at what I was trying to do. The next kind of dogfighting. Neutral dogfighting. Neutral dogfighting, I would say, is where most situations. Where you're just flying along in a squadron of your boys. And then you see four other guys. And you all get into a dogfight. You're trying to get the person off your friend... There's an enemy trying to kill you. You're trying to kill an enemy. You're just... You're doing both at once. You're trying to be offensive and defensive. And in that situation, you just kind of do what works. And you hope for survival and you hope to get kills. That's about 50% of the time. You have about 25% victor chance of victory to about 75% chance depending on the aircraft you're fighting, the aircraft you're in, and, yeah, just the aircraft you're in, what you're fighting, and how you're fighting. The last one is defensive flying. Defensive dogfighting is very important skill to know. There has been many a times where you'll just be, no matter at what altitude you'll be at, someone's going to dive on you. And you can either look up and be like, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? Or you can defensively dogfight to save your skin. Now, there, you can. there's two ways. You can try to force a crash, which I like doing. For when I... Okay, I'm going to go on a little tangent here. So let's just say this. I'm in an 82. Flying 500 feet above the ground. I have very bad turn time. All right speed but good guns, and good armor. 
I can take a couple hits. And then a BF-109 dives on me from 2,000 feet. Or 3,000, preferably. And he's coming down. He's behind me. He's coming down perfect. He has good lead. I can either fly in a straight line, but that allows him to pull up. He is bargaining that I fly in a straight line, and he doesn't notice his presence. Because he'll pull up as he's getting on me. But if I pull a full 90, 180 degree turn, he's going to have to overcommit. And if he overcommits, he'll preferably hit the ground. This trick works great with German aircraft, preferably the DO 335s. Those things will pancake harder than anything I've ever seen. Because they'll just overcommit. Too much speed, too much. Because normally, as I said, when you're trying to dive down on something, they fly straight, you get behind them. But if you pull around and turn around, they have to invert their dive. They have to basically turn around instead of pulling up to get on you, they have to pull down. If they're smart, they will pull off you and let you live. If they're dumb, they will overcommit. So here's a video. I'm going to show a good example. I'm in my P-51. This is TA-152 high altitude looking down at me. There's no way I can have any chance of getting on him. So I decide that I'm just going to pull the old, which I've coined it, the double dip dop. It's my patented maneuver. Fat and pending. <laughs> so, it's basically where you double back on them, and they either A, pull off, or B, overcommit and hit the ground. Preferably. I'm showing this. Alright, let's go put this on for you right now. Just a tad. Don't go for this bomber. Ooh, a fucker wolf. I have a very short attention span. <laughs> Crit. Aircraft destroyed. 60 RP. Let's go. Don't you want for me to... Oh, that TA-152 is... Maybe we can make him crash. Let's go and pull an old... Double dip dab. Yes. Okay. He did not exactly pull exactly how I thought he was going to pull, but... Alright, well. Still worked. Because he's still... Oh, he almost hit the ground. He almost hit the ground. It almost worked. It very almost... I mean, why'd you turn around? That was not a smart decision on your part, buddy. No, I don't think we're going to... Maybe if I run under him again. He seems to be the one that kind of wants to overcommit. No, he's going right back up. You're going to turn around again. Come on, dude. Second times. You should know by now. Your third time, you're a fool. I can just catch you on fire a couple times. That would be cool. Alright, that dude's trying to figure out what he wants to do with me. Seems rather confused, actually. Okay, got a pull. He's overcommitting. Oh, come on, yeah, P-51 power. I gotta work this thing up. Get some fitties out on him. Get some fitties up there, yeah, fitty powers. Fitty powers. <laughs> and that is how you am play a TA-152 player. As you can see here, I was put, as you can see from the video, I was put in a unfavorable position. There's a, there's a J280 I wanted to go for, but there's a TA-152. That guy is the priority. He is above me and diving. Quickly. His guns will shred me the second. I almost messed up. I almost got shredded, but thankfully he missed. And I used the P-51's energy retention and climb ability to shred him. But as you can see, if I had flown in a straight line, he would have kept coming down and gotten on me and probably killed me very easily. But since I doubled back and flew the other direction, he had to pull off or he would hit the ground. He almost did hit the ground the first time. That's what you want. You want them... You want to bait them in. You want to make them think that you're an easy target. Because they'll overcommit. They'll run in, go way too fast. I've done this once or twice in my earlier years. You just overcommit, you go too fast, 
in the grounds waiting for you. That is, and that's about, and I would say through defensive flying, you have about 0 to 25% chance for victory. Very low. But that's not the point. You're not trying to win. You're trying to survive. Now that is just very unfavorable. They're above you. They're coming down on you. That's a good diversion. That's how you get them off you. That's how you can that's how you can very easily get them off you and continue on. It's great for attackers. Like if you're flying the duck, the uh, Romanian duck. If you're flying this thing, it is great. You don't try you don't fly faster than a car normally. So you got to harness every bit of speed you got. And if you're going 200 feet above the ground and someone's diving on you in their nice Spitfire, they're going to pancake if you do the double dop, dip dop. That's why this is the plan I actually developed the maneuver in. The duck. I used, I played attack this way too much. I know way more about defensive flying than any other kind of dogfighting. <laughs> I've learned a lot about over the years of defensive flying. Alright, that is just, you know, they're diving on you. What happens if they're smart, and they burn off their energy, and they're just behind you? They're going to shoot you. Here's a video from my F-80 that I'll show you. And it shows me in a dire situation. I'm not sure which one it's going to be, but here it goes. Come on, come on, hit. Mouse, jeez. Run! Hey, buddy work. If you're not gonna work, then I'm gonna- no. Uh, verticals, verticals. Oh god, I haven't- no, I'm not used to aiming these things. I'm not used to trying to aim these things. Come on, could somebody please maybe help me out here? Nah, we- we are- I gotta get him on the diagonals, gotta fight diagonally! Diagonals! Oh, good heavens. Could I please have team support? Oh, well, uh... Two, six, two down. Er, uh, let's go back on that, uh, well, he wasn't so lucky, so let's go back on this SU-11. Trying to hit a building. If I could get him on target, that would be more ample. Come on, buddy. If you could just eat a couple more. Just a couple more. Come on. A couple more. Alright, brother. He's gonna put that fire out, too. That's a Horton. That is a Horton. Horton, here's a hoe. Oh, he's pulling, though. He's pulling, though. He's keeping with us, though. Oh, he is keeping with us. He is dedicated. Gotta keep fighting him on the diagonals. He is dedicated. This bro, this bro is dedicated. This bro wants me. Oh, he want me though. He kind of want me though. This okay, he's dying. That dude wanted me. That dude wanted me. Just trying not to hit a building. Just trying not to hit a building. Put out the flaps. It's a meteor. You could not be looking at me with an Hispanos, that would be lovely, thank you. Alright, swing around. Alright, no, we're gonna hit a building if we swing ahead. That meteor's still back there. If we can swing around, maybe we can get our guns on him. Oh, god damn it. Not the building. Alright, thank god that didn't have a hitbox. As you can see in the video, I was flying, and I looked behind me, and there was a Horton. Now, the Horton's guns are devastating, and that thing can turn to an ungodly amount. That thing will get on you before you even before you can even say anything. He's on you, and he wants you. Now, the Horton, I know I've played the Horton. I've spaded the Horton. I know its big weakness. It can turn, and its guns are great. But you know what it can't do? It can't fly diagonally. So as you can hear, I keep saying I gotta fight on diagonals. There are three planes to dogfighting. 
And this is the one that really steps you up from a noob to a pro. Most people will fight on the horizontal plane, which is left to right, and vertically, which is up and down. They, there's no other. They'll either go up, down, left, or right. Very easy to kill. Like, look at this. They are just turn very easy. I have to lead one direction. But you can turn the directions you have to go from four to infinite. When you put the D key or the A key and you strafe, you roll down. You make it two times, three times, four times harder for them to hit you by doing that. Because instead of having to aim straight in front of them or straight above them, you have to account for their horizontal their horizontal turn and their vertical drop or raise. Very hard shot to hit. A very hard shot. Make it as your whole goal to defense of dogfighting is to try to keep yourself alive, and making it you the hardest target to hit is a great way of keeping yourself alive. And the Horton, as I was going back a bit, I know the plane, I've spaded it. It cannot fly diagonally. So you gotta fight on the diagonals. As you can see how he was keep turning on me, he kept turning on me. There was no way I could get him off me. But it, as I went diagonally, it took him a minute. Because he had to roll to get on me. And it bought me enough time for the teammates to kill him. And then the meteor shows up. And of course, he can... I don't really know. I've not really looked at the meteor, so I don't know if it can outturn me or not. But throughout that, I survived. I dog fought. And it went well. I survived. So we've talked about the basics of defensive... Neutral and offensive dogfighting. We have talked about how to fight diagonally and how it's very good for you and to know your plane and the enemies. Another important thing is you can dogfight. Dogfighting is like driving a car to an extent. You can drive offensively or you can drive defensively. If you're the offensive driver, you can you'll just run in, see a dude just flying, minding his own business. You're just going to fly in, smoke him. Not paying attention. And before you know it, you're shot down because the whole other team was behind the dude that you weren't paying attention for. And they all dove down behind you and shredded you. Or you can fly defensively. What I like to do is if you look at any video of me flying, I look. I see there's an A29 over there. There's a 262 high, Horton over there. I make a mental list of the planes I have to fight. Now, there's always going to be one you miss, so you keep some lenience room in your attack plan. So you make a list of what you got to fight, what you're looking at, what you know is there. I know I can outperform this, this, and this on the plane I know I'm flying. On this basis, the F-80. I'm playing the F-80. I know which planes I can outperform, because either by experience or just by playing those planes. I know the F-80 is fast. The F-80 is fast, has pretty alright guns, depending if you play the first or the second one. This one has good guns, good speed, pretty good turn rate, so it's pretty good. I know it's, I know it's shortcomings. I know it's strengths. I know I can outperform many things. Like, in this video, there's this MiG-9, right? I've played the MiG-9, I know it's weaknesses. I know I can outrun that thing. And I just shred him. He did not stand a chance. But on that notion, after that, as I know that this plane, I know what I can do in it, and I'm flying defensively. Before the match, or when I start, anyway, I know what's there. I know what planes I'm fighting. I know my plane. I know its limitations. I know their limitations. I can work my strengths and their weaknesses, and I fight diagonally. You want to fight diagonally. Like, if you're dog fighting or they're trying to outturn you, you just pull a little bit down on that D key or that A key, and you're going to completely throw off their aim. You just completely throw them off, which is a good thing, because the quicker you get them off you, the quicker you can hope to get on them. I think I've covered all the points I want to cover, but I'm not sure. 
in this video, I've only really covered the basics of dogfighting, not grinding or spading or ground attacking or even anything. I've just done the basics of dogfighting. That isn't even, even that isn't even going into the guns. You gotta know your guns, your ammo type, the enemy's guns. There is so much more to learn about this game. There's there's many things that even surprise me. Like how quick bit of War Thunder is a game about psychology. If you know if you can get into the minds of your enemy, you can easily win. You can turn a hopeless situation into an easy dub. Because at the end of the day, you can have the best play in the game. Or I could be flying the worst play in the game, and I could fight the best play in the game. It doesn't... It's like what they said in Top Gun Maverick. The plane will only get you so far. The pilot is important. I have been outperformed by players who have been playing this game since 2012. I have been outdone in shitty Japanese biplanes while playing great American aircraft. Like, it's just... Any plane can outdo anything if the pilot's good enough. If you have mastered your aircraft and mastered your weapon, you can. there's no stopping you. Even where, pa on paper, these dogfights are complete losses. Like, I've won five, one V5s in my duck of all aircraft. Against Japanese and Spitfires, I have won one V5s by using the strengths of the duck and the weaknesses of them. You can win the most hopeless of dogfights just by knowing your aircraft and knowing their weakness. It's just... It's fun because you just know your enemy. If you know them, you can easily defeat them. Because 90% of War Thunder players, players will do the exact same thing. It's like there's a book. Because everyone will tell you the exact same thing. Everywhere you go, you gotta climb, you gotta extend, like... Boom and Zoom. There's a book, a manuscript, of how to dogfight. I have found a ways, loopholes around that book. That is how I dogfight. I don't climb as much as others. I just do me. And doing me is how I win. It's just, go back and watch any of my other videos or future videos. You can just see how I perform. And sometimes it doesn't always work out. It's just sometimes... Well, here's a clip. A clip that I can sum up my words better than I can. Best outcome. Best outcome. Maybe he'll burn out? I'm not sure, but we gotta look high. Alright, let's run low. Moving in. Let's pull a hard lefty. Maybe he'll overcommit. Oh, I almost overcommitted. Nope, he uh, pulled out. Issue 6 is dead. Ether 9's rolling back. Oh god, I did not realize he would pull that. Epic. He's burning, so it's fine. Erm. Um, uh, don't pull that again, please. I don't really want to head on you. Not really. Too much, you're already burning, so yeah, you're good. You're dead. What else is coming? That's an F 82. Alright, we are okay. Maybe, yes. Alright, Spitfire time. I didn't think that P 30 would pull that quickly. I didn't think I'd be able to get on him either. I didn't think I thought it was gonna extend like a normal F B 30A, but you know, sometimes they're ballsy, sometimes it works. I guess that's the thing, though, is you normally get yourself into, like, a rut of, like, alright, you know, he's gonna do this, he's gonna do that. It's just what 99% of players do, and then when one player doesn't, it catches you off guard. As you can see in the clip, this P-38 dived on me, right? I did the old double dip dub, got him off me. I went to go fight other things, because, like, he's just gonna extend, reclimb, come back around. The dude instantly turned, and that actually surprised me. That surprised the heck out of me. I was not expecting him to do that. But, due to the P-47's maneuverability and heavy gunnage, I was able to win the situation anyway. I know what about 90% of War Thunder players will do. 
and I can just, I know their movements, I know what they'll do, I know what they're thinking. Oh, in order to get out of this, I gotta turn left. Well, I know you're gonna turn left, because you're not gonna turn right. Like, I know how to defeat you. But that P-38 is in the 10% of players that just do not follow the book. That just happen to just be smart enough to out-turn, or turn, turn around. Just did something that most don't. That surprises me. You want to be in that 10% that just completely throws the person out of their chair and out of their rut. If you can get the enemy out of their comfort zone, then you can surely win. You gotta make them nervous. You gotta make them panic. If they're panicking, they're not thinking straight. But yeah, as I'm saying, there's just so much more, a lot more to cover. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll gladly answer any questions and give any advice I have. Any advice I have that can help you, I'd gladly say. But yeah, this is just really all I have to say. I don't know what else I really have to say. There's probably many other things I'm just not thinking of, but you just know your aircraft. Know who you're fighting. Fight on diagonals. And don't spend your entire life climbing. It's just a waste of time. You'll end up on ground level anyway. Like, I mean, you can just be, you can climb all day in a Japanese Zero, get to a bomber level, and be out dogfought by a B-17. I've had it happen. I've been the B-17 and the Zero. It's not fun. At least for the Zero. Anyway, I think that's it. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned some. Anyway, see ya.